How's it going YouTube? This is Anthony from Woolwork for Rice and this is part one of a five part series on how to modify your DMG01 original Game Boy for Chip2 music production. We will be going over the modification of this particular Game Boy. It is a green Play It Loud DMG01 Game Boy and we will turn it from zero to hero. We'll be adding a backlight screen as well as a quarter inch stereo cable jack and some RCA jacks up here. Okay, we'll also be biverting the screen with the use of a 74HC04 bivert chip. In part one of the series, this video, I'll be going over modifying the Game Boy case to accept the dual pro sound modifications, the left and right RCA jacks, as well as the quarter inch stereo cable plug. I will also be going over cleaning the battery terminals of your Game Boy. A few tools you'll be needing to get started with your modifications, you'll be wanting to pick yourself up a tri-wing screwdriver. The thing about Nintendo Game Boys is that they have these special screws which have three slots in them, which you cannot use a Phillips head or a standard flat tip screwdriver to, uh, to open them with. So you'll be wanting to pick yourself up one of these that are specially designed for the Nintendo Game Boys. You can pick these up for $2 at Kitchbent. I'll have more information on that in the description below. Another set of tools that you'll be wanting to pick up is an assortment of small screwdrivers. This is a Phillips head jeweler screwdriver and it works really good with working on the circuit board inside the Game Boy. I believe you can pick this up at the jewelry section at your local Walmart. However, if they do not have it, you could go to your local electronics store and you should be able to pick up a set of screwdrivers like this. Um, pretty much it's a screwdriver with uh, small bits and uh, they range from a size from um, the Phillips head from double zero all the way to one and for the flat tips all the way from 2.0 to 3.0 and it should work out very well. Another tool that helps make life a whole lot easier when you're working on your Game Boys is a cordless drill. This is a 7.2 volt Black & Decker cordless drill I purchased from Walmart for just under $20. I also purchased a drill bit set uh, for just under $20 also at Walmart. This makes life a whole lot easier when you're drilling into the case to accept the RCA jacks as well as the quarter inch jack cable. Um, as well as if you're installing a eighth inch jack as well. Another tool which I use which is completely optional is this. It's a Dremel rotary tool. Now, uh, fully decked out Dremel kits can run upwards of $100. I use this to help uh, buzz off the corrosion on the battery terminals. Now, if you do not own a Dremel tool or if you do not feel like going out to shelling out the cash for a Dremel tool, you can also uh, take off the corrosion off the battery terminals with some sandpaper. So without further ado, let's start modifying this Game Boy for chiptune music production. So we'll start out by taking apart the DMG01 Game Boy and the first thing that we'll need to do is remove the six tri-wing screws on the back side of the Game Boy case. So we'll flip the Game Boy over and as you can see, we can see four screws, one, two, three, and four. The other two are hidden behind the battery compartment, so we'll take that out. So you'll be taking your tri-wing screwdriver and you'll be taking apart the six uh, screws that are holding the case together. Okay. Okay, now we've removed the six tri-wing screws. Now we'll be uh, separating the case slowly. And if you can see between here, there is this ribbon cable that's holding the two sections together, the front PCB and the rear PCB. So we'll be taking, uh, taking off the ribbon cable. So what you'll want to do is you grab your index finger and your thumb and you'll press against the, uh, the ribbon cable right at this 90 degree bend. So it'll be holding it right there and then you'll slowly back it out of the rear PCB. Okay, we have the two portions of the Game Boy apart and this is what it looks like. Now we'll be removing the components of the Game Boy which include the front PCB and the rear PCB. We will start out by removing the rear PCB. For the rear PCB, uh, there are four screws that are holding the uh, PCB down to the case. There are two up here for the main board and there are two down here which uh, is the PCB for the headphone jack. Okay, so let's uh, remove the screws. We'll be using a jeweler's Phillips head screwdriver. So after you've taken out the four screws, you'll want to lift out the PCB. 
So we'll be taking off this rear PCB. It can get a little tricky, so just kind of work it a little bit. And remember, after you remove it, also take out the power switch because this is now loose and it can fall out and you can definitely lose it. Now here is the back case of the DMG-01 Game Boy and you'll be wanting to take out the, the battery terminals. So we have one here, one down here, and one down here. And how we remove them is that we have to press down some retaining tabs on the inside of the case. So we'll be wanting to take a flat tip screwdriver And if you look on your Game Boy, uh, there'll be a little retaining tab here. So what you'll want to do is you want to push down and then push out. And turn it over and you'll be pushing down and pushing out. And the last and the third one, push down and push out. Now, if you look closely at these uh, these terminals, uh, you'll see that there is some corrosion on the um, on the battery terminals. Now, if you have a DMG01 original Game Boy that does not turn on, chances are that the battery terminals are corroded, and all you need to do is uh, cut through the corrosion, get a good contact, and it should turn on just fine. Now we'll be removing the front PCB from the front case of the Game Boy and it is held in by 10 Phillips head screws. So we'll be removing these screws 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now that we have all the screws removed from the front PCB, we want to remove the PCB from the front case. Now along the inside of this screen, on the inside of the case, there is a little bit of adhesive that's holding onto the, uh, the screen that's attached to the front PCB. So we'll be wanting to remove the PCB very carefully from the case. So it might feel like it's sticking a little bit and then you'll want to kind of push against the front screen if that's giving you any, any trouble. Okay, so this is what the, uh, the front PCB should look like on the front end, and this is the inside of the, uh, the front of the case. So what you want to do is you want to take out these pads, the, um, the directional pad, um, the little contact, contact pads for it, and the start select as well as the A and B buttons. And you want to take out all of the buttons and save the pads off to the side so that you don't lose them. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, the screen is pretty scratched up. I don't know if you can see that very well, but what we're going to do is we're going to pop it out and we're going to replace it with a new screen. So it comes out fairly easily and uh, installing the new screen will be one of the last things that we do so that um, we don't get any dust trapped behind there.